Welcome to Art is for Everyone and this week it's a little bit different. Um, I'm going to be using two colors in our project um, and I'm using them from Rublev paints um, which are some of my favorite original like kind of um, earth-based pigment paints that I that I ever tried and I love them very much. And it, um, you don't need to use these, obviously, but I'm using them today because um, I left a bunch of stuff at my studio and this is what I have. Um, and plus I love them. So we need two colors. We need a burnt sienna and an ultramarine blue or a blue. So in your Artist for Everyone set, that would be Sienne Brule and Blue Premier. Um, or in any watercolor set or any watercolor brand, you would use um, like an ultramarine blue or um, just some kind of true blue, even cobalt would be fine, and um, a burnt sienna. Okay, so those two colors are what we're going to be using today, and we're going to be painting a winter landscape with two colors. Okay? All right, so I'm also, I've got here a Strathmore watercolor postcard. And I've got a selection of brushes here. I'm not sure. I think I'll probably just use my triple um, zero squirrel mop and maybe like a size two pointed brush. Um, but that's really all you need. Just a basic round brush in, in, in even one size would probably be fine for this, but it might be nice to have a finer point brush um, for some of the little tree limbs and stuff. All right? Okay, so um, before we get started, I also want to mention I have some, some plain table salt um, to sprinkle. All right, so I'm going to take some of my two paint. If you're working from tubes, um, what I do is I just put a tiny bit onto a palette, like a, um, like a white dinner plate is usually what I use. This is a special palette that I have for temper paints, but I just use it... Um, for watercolor too. It's also great for making watercolor. It's just a piece of it's just a piece of tempered glass. All right, so I've got here um, my burnt sienna and my ultramarine blue. Sam, hold on, my cat's gonna jump over here. You get down. You get down. Okay, and I've got that ready. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use a pencil, okay, and I'm gonna draw a tree. All right, so I'm gonna do it about two-thirds of the way over and just sort of draw a tree trunk up and maybe let it trail off that way sort of this way and you can draw your tree however you see fit okay so it doesn't have to be like mine All right, so just a, a simple tree. Now, once you've done this project and you kind of know how it works, you can draw as many trees as you want. But I'm just drawing one tree trunk here. And I'm gonna try to keep paint away from this when we're putting our first layer down, all right? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put down a water glaze. And I'm gonna do it on the outside of my tree. All right. And just sort of let some water dance around on my paper. I'm not worried about um, the very edges because we're not going to take our paint to the very edges. But I basically want this fluid layer. And then I'm going to pick up some of my ultramarine and mute it out on my palette pick up a little bit of the burnt sienna mute and then add it to the ultramarine so I'm creating a gray okay and I'm just gonna take my brush and I'm going to 
put it right up to the tree and just see how I'm just kind of going back and forth all the way out. And then I'll take some water, put it in there. Just, I want it to be very fluid, okay? And while that's still wet, I'm going to take a clean, damp brush and just sort of run it along the edge and run it along the edge here, just so it softens that. All right, and then I'm going to take some straight ultramarine blue and I'm just going to kind of go up and down and then make them smaller. All right, and then I'm going to take some straight burnt sienna and do the same. Right sort of over where I put the, the ultramarine little marks. Okay, and then once again, I'm going to push some water at the edges. And that's it. Okay? Now, while this is still wet, actually it's probably too wet, so let's do the other side first and then we'll, we'll put some salt in there. We don't want to ever put salt on when it's really, really wet because then the salt just dissolves. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other side of my tree. Now, if you had several trees, guess what? You would, you would do this um, for each section in between, even if you did it on a very large piece of paper. Okay, same thing, I'm going to take my gray, put it right up to that tree trunk, and then just sort of feather it out. Take some water, kind of go around the edges here. Take some straight blue, and then some straight burnt sienna. Take some water and again push it along the edges. And then I have one, um, actually two more spaces to fill, okay? So in here I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to put water down add my gray and probably just leave it at that and then same thing over here such a small area I'm just gonna paint in the gray okay so I can still dance a little bit more water into the edges because I, I kind of want them to be soft. I don't I don't want them to look like they just stop. Right, so I'm just softening everything with my with just plain water. And put enough gray down here. So as long as things are wet, remember that we can go back, right? And just soften my edge. Okay, now it is definitely um, dry enough to add some salt. So I sprinkle some in my hand so I don't put too much on. And I grab some granules and I'm just going to sprinkle the salt very, very randomly and just a little bit into the wet paint. Not too much. Okay, and now I'm going to let this layer completely dry. It's going to dry 100% dry. And then we'll be back. Okay, so this layer is now dry. And I can just sort of lightly brush the salt away. I don't need it on there anymore. And you can see that it just gave a very, very subtle effect. Okay, just, just sort of snow-like, I guess, is what I would say. So now we're going to paint the tree. And I'm going to need a little bit more burnt sienna. Okay, 
So I'm going to show you my way of painting a tree. And I also, hold on, I'm looking for a brush. Here it is. I'm also going to show you a little technique to lift more branches out, and we're going to do that first. So I'm just going to take a short, stiff brush. Now you don't have to do this part, but it's kind of fun. So I'm going to take a short, stiff brush, and I don't actually have any tissue in here, so I've been trying to use rags instead of um, paper towels just to be more environmentally friendly. So um, I'm going to take a short, stiff brush, and just sort of work it back and forth and then blot it with a paper towel or, or a towel. And I can do it twice if I need to, just to sort of lift out some paint. I prefer doing this than drawing them in sometimes. Number one, I get a really nice organic look when I do that, and plus, it's just easier so you don't have to paint around these tiny little bits. So I can do another one over here, just, just a little. Blot it up. And sometimes it takes more than once. Okay? Now I can also take this damp brush along the sides of my tree and just sort of soften those edges. Do you see that? I just sort of softened it, and I can do it here too. And just in case your edge becomes hard, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. And sometimes you want a hard edge, and, and sometimes you don't want a hard edge. So if you don't want a hard edge, which I might not here, I just, I just can soften it like that. And this looks a little bit too symmetrical, so I'm going to put one more. Um, I'm going to pretend like it starts about here and bring it out there. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna actually paint the tree. And before we start, we're gonna mix up a nice gray brown. So I'm gonna start with ultramarine and make a nice dark puddle of it. Okay, I want this paint to be fairly dark. Our tree is dark. And then I'm going to grab my burnt sienna and I'm going to add it to the ultramarine until I get a nice, rich, dark brown. So about like that. So it's not a really bright brown, right? It's, it's definitely on the gray-brown side. I want it to be dark like this, all right? And once I have that, I'm going to take some on my brush and I'm going to draw a line along this side, rinse my brush, and then sort of pull it all the way down. Okay? I want that first line there to be nice and dark. Now I can just take clear water and bring it all the way over to the other side. And I'm not going to go all the way to the bottom. I'm just leaving a little bit here because I want it to look like there's snow. Okay, so now I can pick up more of that dark and I can drop it in on that side and just let it sort of spread across. And then I can take my brush and coax it a little bit. So it's gray, it's brown, it's, it's shading blue. These colors separate, which is beautiful. Now I'm just dropping water in. Okay, see that? Picking up a little bit of my burnt sienna now and just dropping it in. I want this tree to look really dreamy. And notice that I'm just doing the main trunk. I'm not doing all the little auxiliary branches yet. Okay, more water. Just drop water in there. Let it be nice and dreamy. And I'm going to rinse my brush and dry it off. And I'm just going to run my clean damp brush along that left, that left edge to soften it. 
pick up any extra paint and just soften that edge. And I'm going to do the same thing at the bottom of my tree. Just soften it. See that? Okay. Now that that main part is done, all right, I might even drop in a little bit more burnt sienna in a few places here and there just to warm it up a little bit. Depending on the paints that you use, some might really bleed blue. It just really depends. Okay, now I can go ahead and do these other branches. And so I'm just going to take a little bit of that gray-brown on my brush and I'm going to um, come up underneath that branch and just put a little bit where it meets the tree. And then I'm just going to use clean water to pull it out to the end. I can drop in a little bit more if I need to. But I don't want it to be too dark and too stiff. It's just sort of dreamy. Remember, there might even be snow on it. Same thing here. I'm just going to put a little bit of dark where the tree branch meets. Then take water and soften it out, adding a little bit more if I need to. Same thing right here. Putting the brown gray where the branch meets the tree. And then using water to pull that color out to the end. You see how that works? It's just um, that is my cat Sam. If you can hear him, he's like running around like a crazy man. All right, same thing over on this side. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna put some of the brown gray at the base of the branch and then use water to soften it up. And then I can drop in a little bit more if I feel like I need it. And then one more. And then soften it up. So I can pretty much do this whole project with this one brush if I'm careful. So now my tree is done for now. Okay, I don't want to do anything else to it. I want to let it dry and then we'll be back to the, to the next step. Okay, so the tree is now dry and now we can start to add a few little fine details just to bring it all together. So quite honestly, um, we could go in and put some shadowing in the snow, but I really like the effect. I, I don't I don't want to do too much there. I like the simplicity of this, okay? But what I am going to do is I'm going to put some a, a few details on the tree just to bring it to more fullness. So I'm going to mix up some more of my dark gray, brown. Add a little bit more of my burnt sienna in there. I want it nice and dark. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to use a smaller brush, I think, for this. So I'm going to use a brush where I can get a little bit of a finer detail. I'm going to show you two brushes. So this one is by Princeton. It's a Princeton Select pointed filbert in a size 2. This this is a really, really excellent brush to get fine detail. And then this one is a number six Da Vinci Casaneo. No idea what it's called, but it's sort of like a pointed round that comes to a really, really fine point. Can you, can you see that? And this is a wonderful brush for sort of dancey brush strokes, especially like tree limbs and grasses and things where you don't want a lot of control, where you want it to look more loose and organic, okay? Um, so an, another brush that would work like this one would be a rigger um, and they take they take a little practice to get the hang of but they're definitely worth worth looking into. So I'm going to start 
by picking up some of my brown paint and I'm gonna make some areas a little bit more in contrast. So like right here, I'm gonna go around where this um, tree branch meets, okay? And then I can take my brush with some clean water and just soften that. See how it just made it look a little bit more realistic. Now this one here, I'm gonna bring actually in a little bit to about here. See that? And it just makes it seem like it's coming from the front of the tree. Gives it a little bit of a different perspective. And then I can just soften that edge. All right, and then I'm gonna to have to do the same thing on top of it, because it would have a top edge as well. And then I can just soften that. Just soften it right into the tree, just so it gives it a little bit of dimension. Okay, and I'm gonna do the same thing to this one. I'm gonna put some dark around it. That one I don't even need to soften. And then this one as well. And that one I think I need to soften. I'm gonna take this off, it's driving me crazy. <clears throat> Not the best brush for softening, but it's a great brush to get in those little details. And then if I need to, I can always just touch my tissue or my cloth and then I'm going to soften that right there because it just got a little bit too hard. All right and then there's probably one more up here. Just make sure that that has, has enough. And then one more right up here. Just add a little bit of depth to my branch. See that? Okay, now I'm also going to want to add a little bit to the underside, so I can, I can do that. I can just put tiny little lines as it comes up and just sort of give it a little bit of definition and let those branches sort of trail off. Do you see what I'm doing? Just tip of my brush, just sort of letting it dance along there just to give it some definition. I'm not really putting a line. So for here at the end, just to make it sort of trail off. Little tiny marks. And it just gives it a little bit more of a realistic look. You can let them trail off to be really fine edges. And a little bit more on this one. So I'm not outlining it, I'm, I'm putting these little cross, cross marks on them. And then every now and then a little bit of a line. See that? Just being really soft and gentle with it. Same thing here. Just a little bit there. This one just is not wanting to behave for me. Okay. So also, sometimes trees have these, these tiny little pieces that sort of stick out here and there. And we're going to put some of those on too. So I'm going to use this more dancy brush and get some paint on it. And just sort of let some little pieces little sticks come out here and there. Not much, just a few. If you do too many, you're going to risk it looking odd. But you can put a few in. Yeah. Just 
a few here and there. And it just gives it a little bit more of a sense of realism. Okay? Now I can also go into my tree and I can put in some little details and textures here with a with the tip of my brush. Sometimes trees have little knots on them within the bark. So I'm just see I'm just letting this dance around and put some little lines and dots and and shapes. Maybe there's even a break in the in the tree. So there's like a a deep crevice here. I could paint that in. There's something like that. So trees have character, they're not perfect, so we, we can just add in little bits here and there. Blemishes, I guess you would call them. Marks where animals, like a woodpecker has been, or see that? I really like the idea of there being this crevice. little bit down there. So I'm feeling better about this tree now. It's starting to get a little bit more life in it and more character and it looks um, it looks a little bit more real. Okay. So the last thing that I want to do is I want to put a few tree trunks in the in the back here. Just to um, give it a little bit more depth. I don't want them to be rigid. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little clear water and just put a little clear water so if I take a, um, a fine brush and I just put some smaller branches in, do you see that? Just some darker ones. I'm just putting in more lines, but they're just a little bit darker. a few here and there. Just a couple. See how it just gives it a little bit more depth and dimension? So it's not so um, not so one kind of one layer. There already was a little bit of depth like this here. I'm just not being for some reason can't get that in there. There. And then I can do the same thing over on this side. So just add in a little bit of water. So it's not it's not too stiff, I guess is is what I want to say. And just Put in a few. Soften anything that um, looks hard at the bottom. There. Okay. I think I'm done. So that is a really simple way to make a lovely scene, a winter scene in the woods with only two colors of watercolor paint. A, a blue and a rust, indigo and sienna. Okay? Two, two colors, blue and orange. Complementary colors, they make all sorts of beautiful colors when combined together. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, please ask. And I will see you next week with a dandelion lesson. Take care, everyone. Mm -hmm.